All right, so hello and welcome to the IPFS weekly call. Today is Monday, July 6, 2020. My name is Dirk and I'm your host for the month of July. So this week we have Joao Antunes with us to present his work on IPFS testbed. Uh, very nice to have you with us, Joao. You want to, uh, want to take it from here? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, let me just, okay, everything is working. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to speak to you um, about um, uh, a byproduct of our master thesis, which has been uh, the IPFS testbed. Um, so a little bit about me, I'm, I'm John Tunes, I'm a software engineer at, at YLD, a software engineering consultancy. Um, and um, I was a master student at um, <laughs> Technique Lisboa, but I've um, successfully um, finished my master thesis. And again, this is a byproduct of that. Um, that was my end all over there, um, if anyone wants to chat. So let's get started. Um, previously, um, uh, I don't know if uh, everyone that, that, that's here uh, uh, was acquainted with it, but um, I was working on a peer-to-peer -peer pub subsystem focused on reliability, persistence, and delivery guarantees. Um, that is PulsarCast. Um, but while we were working on it, we eventually landed on a problem, which is um, we wanted to uh, confirm that um, our uh, system actually performed as we wished. Um, so we needed to test it, essentially. Um, and we, we came up with a series of requirements. Um, we wanted something that was um, easy to deploy and test different versions of it. Um, we wanted to, of course, extract relevant usage metrics, both from the application itself, but also um, from the, um, the hosts that um, uh, were running such application, like CPU consumption, memory, all that stuff. Um, we wanted to have the ability to simulate uh, network constraints um, because ideally we would, of course, test this on a real world scenario. Um, we we're trying to simulate a peer-to-peer -peer network um, with um, essentially um, cloud uh, infrastructure and, and uh, of course our own machines. So um, we wanted something that could simulate such network constraints. Um, we wanted something that we'll, we could easily test out on a local system, but also scale as much as we wanted slash as much as we could given our budget. Um, and we wanted something that it could be uh, controlled from a central point um, so that we could instrument it and, and uh, of course, um, perform our own experiments, um, but also that we can, could easily automate. Um, and by looking to all of these requirements, um, one thing that pops out is um, reproducibility. Um, and if we try to understand, um, like, again, from the requirements and looking at what re reproducibility is, is, is just essentially um, given the, 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 same, uh, the same build, the same constraints, um, we, wanted that, we wanted that for a, a given input would also, we would always get the same output, of course. Um, or you can look at the Wikipedia definition, which is way better than mine. Um, but um, historically speaking, um, reproducibility is usually achieved through some sort of virtualization. Um, and the, the way we went about it, and more recently, of course, um, uh, a lot of people rely on, on a, uh, a, lighter, a lighter way of virtualization, which is essentially containerization. Um, and that's what we ended up with. Uh, so we went with um, Docker containers. Um, but we, wanted, we needed something that would allow us to orchestrate um, set containers, whether it be locally or, again, um, on, a, on a cloud provider. Um, and the... The, 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 the reference orchestrator nowadays is, of course, Kubernetes. It has this immense community, um, all sorts of projects coming around it. Um, and um, it was something also that um, uh, we already have some knowledge in, so it made perfect sense. Um, and we relied on Elm to package said uh, application, to package our, our application, of course. Um, and with reproducibility out of the way, um, we also took another um, Another one of our goals out of the way, which is essentially the uh, uh, ability to easily scale um, our test bed to, to a large network, and that can be achieved through Kubernetes. Um, the next step, of course, is, and um, this is all, um, this, the, the point of this is, of course, to extract data, and um, our test would only be as good as the data that we are able to extract. Um, because of it, 
um, we, we, we needed something that was able to provide us with application level data. So um, specifically about uh, PulsarCast, we wanted to know uh, how many subscriptions that have, have been fulfilled, um, how many events have been sent, um, all of that information. Um, and we wanted, of course, also again, system data. So uh, CPU, memory, network usage, and finally, we wanted to correlate said data and visualize it. Um, and we went with um, the Elastic Stack, so essentially Elastic Search to store all this information, um, Logstash to process um, these data, Bits to collect data, and finally Kibana to provide us with the, the, the uh, visual, visual, visualization and, and the data correlation part of it. Um, so. Um, Again, with that out of the way, it's time to move to our next goal, which is essentially how are how will we simulate network constraints? Um, even before we actually uh, looked into Kubernetes or Docker for containerization, um, <clears throat> this was already a huge concern for us. So we wanted we want we really wanted to add visibility, um, and there is, like there are a lot of projects out there that. Um, Simulate some sort of it. So a great example of it, a great, a great example of it is Mininet, and then it's kind of sibling projects which are ContainerNet and MaxiNet, um, that allow you to do like a lot, but it's a lot more than what we actually wanted. So over here we, you could simulate all, all sorts of um, L2 network configurations. So you could again uh, connect switches, connect routers, um, all of that. We we did that. That was way more than um, what we wanted. We, we essentially just wanted something that could simulate network constraints around our application. We didn't really want um, what were the, the um, network configurations underneath. Um, there, and given that we're already in the, the Kubernetes ecosystem, if you look at um, projects around it, we have the, the uh, network mesh projects such as, such as Istio that allow you to um, inject some kind of faults. However, usually these faults are uh, focused on the L7 layer, so HTTP layer. Um, and again, that's not what we really needed. Um, so um, we eventually came to find a really useful project, which is Toxy Proxy, um, by the, the folks over at Shopify. They have this open source um, TCP proxy um, that um, is quite uh, thin and allows you to configure a series of um, network constraints, TCP faults, all of that, um, network uh, uh, congestion, network delays. Um, and uh, more importantly, it also exposed an HTTP API. Um, so we came up um, with uh, what would become our final essential deployment. Um, and over here we have essentially a, a pod. So in Kubernetes, a pod is um, the, like the, the, the atom of Kubernetes, if, if you were to say. Um, and over here we have two uh, containers. One acts as a sidecar for um, the IPFS deployment. Um, and this is where this is for where the the, the um, Pulsarcast RPC messages, as well as other um, um, IPFS um, protocol uh, messages, would flow in through. And these will be proxy by proxy proxy. Um, given that both these uh, containers also expose an, an HTTP API, we could then interact with them and create either um, faults on the fly or create some sort of interaction on the fly. Again, um, interacting with Pulsarcast directly or interacting with Flood Sub directly or any other of the uh, um, IPFS um, uh, properties, essentially. Um, finally, of course, we have the, the, the bits to collect both logs and metrics, processed by Logstash, stored in Lexi Search, and finally, we relied on Kibana to, to visualize the whole thing. Um, so yeah, this is the, the view um, from, uh, if you're considering multiple um, Kubernetes nodes, um, I'll go ahead and skip this part, but if you're interested, um, um, just reach out to me afterwards. So, like, essentially, this just describes the namespaces that we relied on, and um, uh, how the whole uh, thing comes together. Um, so now we have a way to simulate network constraints. Um, we, of course, still need a way to uh, control this from a central point. We need, we need a way to interact with it. Um, so we created a, a really small um, CLI tool that, um, again, if you remember correctly, um, 
interacts with um, these APIs, so the, the IPFS API and the Toxiproxy API. Um, so the idea is that this tool allows us to um, exact commands inside, uh, execute commands um, at each of the uh, um, IPFS nodes that we have running, also create Toxics. So Toxics is essentially the, the, the uh, name that Toxiproxy uh, gives a certain fault. So latency, for example, um, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, uh, let's just go move on to a really quick demo. So um, I don't know who was in the last, uh, um, I don't know who was in the last um, community call, but essentially um, uh, this is, so this is the exact same demo. I'm, I'm just going to focus on the, the, uh, the test bed this time. So essentially over here, locally, I have already running um, five um, um, IPFS deployments, essentially. Um, and what I'll be doing next is uh, telling the logs of each of the deployments. This is running locally. Um, I'll, I'm going to provide an overview on, on how this was running afterwards. Um, and um, again, what we're doing over here is just essentially from a central point, which is uh, uh, my machine. Um, I'm actually creating um, um, a topic on a specific node. So this, in this case, node one. And afterwards, I'll, I'll be moving on and interacting with other nodes. So this is the CLI tool that I was telling you about. I'm just interacting, uh, interacting with it um, locally. Um, and we can, we can do all, all sorts of things. We can actually um, not only run pulsecast commands, uh, as we're doing over here, but we could also just ping other nodes or even um, actually, I'm going to move on to the presentation. Uh, we could even um, execute a series of bulk commands that um, have been previously described on, a, on some sort of file, okay? Um, so this is how we, we did the bulk of the, the work um, for our uh, tests that I'm actually going to describe afterwards. Um, so this essentially covers um, our whole problem. So I was, how did we run this in practice? So in practice, um, we run a total of actually five VMs. So this, this was to collect the results from our master keys essentially. Um, each of those are two virtual CPUs, 16 gigs of RAM. Um, we put the LK cluster in place and, and we, ran, we managed to run a total of 100 um, IPFS test deployments. Um, essentially, uh, uh, um, and the, the IPFS deployment that I ran was actually a fork of the um, JavaScript IPFS where I actually included PulsarCast, but also uh, trimmed a bit of the fat um, so that we could end up with a lighter um, a version of IPFS that doesn't, didn't consume that much, that many resources in terms of, of memory, for example. Um, and these are some of the graphs that we collected. Um, these were actually just used for control. We then actually extracted data on the, on the side and, and um, um, created a, graphs uh, afterwards for the actual work um, uh, but yeah so all of the pro all of these projects are, are also open source again all of my master Jesus work as is, uh, is open source so feel free to check it out um, if you're also curious about PostalCast and you weren't able to attend the, the, the last presentation um, also because it was cut, cut short uh, but um, the, the the projects all, all of these all of these projects are also open source um, and finally, just um, a huge thank you for my thesis advisors, um, Luis Vega and David Dias. Um, there was another colleague of mine also working on another um, thesis on, on, on um, the IPFS ecosystem, John Tiago, he helped me a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, finally, um, Technic Lisboa, um, also Microsoft Azure for sponsoring the, the test runs. Um, and finally, to all of you folks um, that um, welcome me into the IPFS and the P2P community. So thank you very much. And um, questions, if anyone has. Oh, thank you, Joel. That's uh, really amazing what you've achieved in such a short time. It's really cool. Um, I have a few questions, but I want to open it up to anyone else if anyone wants to, to jump in. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'll, I'll just keep my sharing my screen. It might be useful. I don't know. Uh, Uh, 
Uh, let me ask, so you, you, uh, this testbed works specifically with uh, JS IPFS, JavaScript IPFS. And I'm yeah, wondering, right. uh, does it work with Go IPFS as well or? or? So uh, it directly it doesn't. Um, so out of the box, it doesn't essentially. Um, it is possible to make it work. It, it, it wouldn't take that much of a deal. So essentially, I'm just going to quickly show you just for some context. Um, unless we're short on time, please let me know if I'm um, no, we still have 10 minutes. Of time. Okay. Yeah, we got plenty of time. Um, so um, again, we're using Elm to package. Um, uh, if you remember correctly, we said that we were using Elm to package our application. Um, and what this is, Elm, um, I, I don't know if everyone is, here is familiar with Elm, but it essentially allows us to um, package a whole of um, Kubernetes resources into a single, uh, essentially a single uh, deployment or um, a single release, better said. Um, and over here, we're using uh, JS APFS, but um, this is essentially a matter of, uh, let me just talk to proxy. Okay, so over here, we have the manifest for the, 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 our deployment, our JS APFS deployment. Um, changing this would be a matter of just changing the image that is being used, and you can actually provide it um, uh, through configuration. Um, and essentially changing these ports because I do believe that the, the deployment on, on um, Go IPFS runs on, on a different set of ports. Um, but that, that would be basically the, the, the grasp of the change that would need to take place. It's, it's relatively easy to, to um, again, use other things other than just IPFS. Very cool. Any other questions from people? So Joao, could you give us like uh, just like a one minute overview of, of Pulsar Cast and what that was about? Uh, yeah, sure. So give me just, uh, okay, let me just. Okay, cool. So, um, Really, really brief presentation, essentially. Um, but uh, are they able to present mode? Okay, over here. Um, um, so the, the the reasoning for PulsarCast came um, essentially out of the usefulness that that um, we have for um, PubSub uh, and um, the dependency that that PubSub is for a lot of applications, especially in the distributed uh, system realm, of course. However, um, there seem to be uh, oh, oh, oh. okay. So, however, there seems to be a, a clear lack of. Um, in fact, let me skip all of this. Oh, okay, yeah. So essentially, this is. Um, um, th there seems to be a, a clear lack of of sub applications that. Um, um, in the peer-to-peer -peer realm that focused on things that are usually associated with centralized applications. Um, so usually, if you're relying on you know, some kind of message queuing system or something like that on a, for a centralized application, uh, you have a series of things such as um, delivery guarantees and, and uh, the guarantee that your data, data is persisted, um, things that aren't usually associated with in the peer-to-peer -peer realm where you, you have like a lot of um, PubSub solutions that focus essentially either on real-time communication um, or um, don't provide the same kind of guarantees that you usually have in the centralized realm. So this is why we came with, with PulsarCast. So PulsarCast is a topic-based PubSub um, module um, that was actually implemented on, on top of loop P2P that focuses on data persistency, eventual delivery guarantees, and, and high scalability. Um, so over here is like the essentially overview design of it. And at the heart of it, we relied on uh, the a concept that's super familiar to IPFS, which is the Merkle DAG. Um, and um, the way we went about it is um, we have these two core resources, the topic descriptor and the event descriptor, um, and these resources link between each other. Um, so um, event descriptors actually link to the topic they refer to and other event, past event descriptors um, on the event stream. And uh, topic descriptors point to a previous version of said topic. Um, 
and also uh, other subtopics if it's relevant for them to actually point to other subtopics. Um, so uh, the, the idea is that through this link of messages, um, you're able to um, solve, um, you're able to resolve these Merkle links uh, up to a point where you may have uh, a missing uh, message or, or you weren't actually even part of the network at the time. So you're able to reach out to the network and say, you know what, I, I don't have um, these event descriptors, could someone provide me them? Like this is the essential, essential gist of it. So it ends up working more as an X. So you're not you're acknowledging that you haven't received the content you should have. Um, so just like the, the, the brief overview design of the whole thing is this. So you have the, the messages that are linked together and the messages also link to the topics and the topics uh, linked to a previous version of said uh, topic descriptor. So because we're dealing with immutable content, um, if you have the topic foo and you wanted to change something like, for example, add a new subtopic, um, you would need to create a new uh, topic descriptor, but then you could point to the previous one. So essentially this gives you like a nice history of, of said topic. Um, and finally, you have the subtopic links if, uh, if the topic makes, uh, if, if the topic makes use of them, it's not, it's not mandatory, of course. Um, and underneath, we relied on, on the, the Kadim LDHT provided by LPTP um, to help us create the dissemination trees um, that we then use to, to disseminate content for um, each of the, 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 the topics. Um, I think that essentially gives like a, an overview. As for results, um, we were able to um, actually achieve a, um, a 99 percent of subscription fulfillment rate essentially the, the subscription fulfillment fulfillment rate tells us for the um, for the amount of subscribers we have to a topic um, how many of them of, of those subscribers were able to um, uh, were able to receive the content they were subscribed to um, compared to uh, for example flood sub um, I don't have the results over here actually yeah sorry I don't have the results for flood sub over here but the, the results were, were quite lower and the way we tested was actually with a, an open source um, uh, data set of Reddit comments from 2007, a sample of approximately uh, 25,000 comments. Um, and again, running on the test bed that we previously described. This is a distribution of said um, comments. Um, so this is like the five minute overview of the whole thing. You're probably super confused, but um, again, if you have any questions, just feel free to, to reach out to me directly. That was uh, very impressive how much you got into five minutes. And it was actually very easy to follow. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's because of the practice at this time. <laughs> so we have three minutes left. Does, uh, does anyone have any more questions? So I guess, uh, could you um, talk a little bit about how, like tie the two together, how you use testbed with Pulse Archives? What were you were you testing exactly or changing about the environment? Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, right. So I don't know if I have that information over here, actually. I thought I had. OK, so um, for the, OK, for the, 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 for, for the whole, uh, for the purpose of the whole experiment, what we went about was we created um, um, essentially three different experiments. Uh, so um, Pulsacast, one of the things that I've actually told is because this content is immutable, so the topic descriptor um, actually allows us to uh, add some kind of uh, configuration in it. And, and we can use this configuration to actually tell how do we want these messages to be linked. So you're able to actually enforce um, a set of um, fun properties, such as if you want delivery guarantee or the delivery guarantee, you can do it. So again, by configuring said topic. So um, we went about with three different experiments. So one was flood sub, the other one was pulsar cast without order guarantee for messages. And the, the other one was pulsar cast with order guarantee for messages. All of these ran under normal network conditions and with 500 milliseconds of um, network latency and 300 milliseconds of JIRA. So uh, to simulate again, uh, and abnormal network constraints. Um, and the, the, in terms of results, uh, so again, for Postcast without order guarantee, um, we had a, a, 
we, we passed with flying colors. Um, for post cast with order guarantee, uh, we actually struck the limits of our test bed, essentially. Um, Kubernetes started shutting down um, a couple of nodes uh, due to um, either memory usage or CPU usage. Um, however, even still compared to FloodSub, we perform better and providing a, a better quality of service, of course. Um, and the way we brought everything together um, was actually through uh, this uh, test harness, which is actually also open source. Um, essentially, just another CLI tool um, that from a data set um, actually runs a set of um, EPFS test bed CLI commands. Um, so we were able to um, ingest data both in a bulk format, process it, and then measure the results. Really cool. Awesome, Joe. Well, we're, uh, we're just about out of time, but uh, thank you so much. This is a really, really interesting and really clear presentation. I uh, appreciate you joining us today, and thank you to everyone else who joined the call. Uh, this thank has you very much. been, thank you, Joe. Uh, this has been the IPFS weekly community call, and hopefully, we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Thank you.